Hot. 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 Hot dog. All right. Well, I'm recording on both. So, hi, I'm Danny, and this is my girlfriend Kelly. Yo. And uh, welcome to the Retro Camera View Tech Talk. We're in my lair, aka my room, and I'm here to teach Kelly a little bit more about NU, ISO aperture and shutter speed. Uh, Kelly really doesn't know a lot about this, and she keeps asking me. Yeah. Yeah, so I figured I'm gonna try and teach her something. And Kelly, you tell me if I'm not explaining something well because I'll try and explain it better. Okay, cool. So you're probably wondering why we have this little device over here. Um, well, this is just a little show of how light works, okay? So I'm gonna turn on this little flashlight thing here if it'll all stay together. Of course, it immediately breaks <laughs> when I try to start it. God dang it. If you had it the other way. All right, well, you are. All right, so we have a <laughs> lens and a flashlight and a board. And I have a slide here. So I'm going to put this in front of this thing. And Kelly, can you kind of see yourself yeah, there? Yeah, it's me. Well, yeah, so basically what I'm doing right now is, is this is uh, projecting a slide onto a, on a plane, just mm -hmm. as if like any sort of old slide projector would do, except it would be much more robust and normal than this. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you kind of what happens when I move this thing forwards and backwards. Notice how you kind of go out of focus. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to close down this lens on this aperture. Just close down the aperture. You see how you went in focus a little bit? Right. All right. So I'll try and do it again. I also have this, which is, this is, would literally be called an f-stop. It could go in a lens. It's just a, a thing with a hole in it. <laughs> and look what happens. I'm a little out of, out of I'm going to put myself a little bit out of focus again. Oh, I'm gonna put this little small hole in front of the flashlight. All right, see how your eyeball's in mm -hmm. focus? Out of focus. I basically just showed you um, how you can control focus on your stuff. I don't exactly know how to explain all that, but Well, I mean, it's kind of like whenever you don't have good eyesight and then you squint your eyes. You let less light in to make the yeah. image clearer. Yeah, and more things pull into focus. So anyways, you're probably wondering, like, well, okay, that was fancy and all, but uh, I have no idea what the hell that really means or implies. So let me get all this crap out of the way. Basically, aperture and what you just saw is it's a adjustment inside mm. of a lens that closes down and opens up. The sphincter. The, the sphincter of the camera. Okay. Cool. Basically, and as the sphincter closes, <laughs> basically uh, uh, more light is able to. To, from your surroundings be able to be pulled in and, and fit on the, uh, the film plane. So notice these are like both in front and behind each other. Mm -hmm. So if you had a camera right here, I'm gonna show you how aperture would affect these two things. F2.8, which is a fairly open aperture, fairly big. Right. This is what you would get. See that? More light. Right, so you see I focused on the Pentax, mm -hmm. and this is out of focus. Gotcha. All right, so I'm going to close down the lens a little bit more and let's see what happens. I'm going to close it down to uh, F4. Now see what happens. Notice that the dust yeah, is a little bit more, definitely, more in focus. Definitely more in focus. Let's go even further. What about F8? Totally. You see? Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit more in focus. Okay, and then F22. So not only is it affecting... Like your light's in yeah, focus now. Yeah, now the light's pulled in focus. So not only is it affecting your the amount of light going into the lens, mm -hmm. but it's affecting the focus. So I mean, more light, less focus. It means that there's more stuff being pulled into focus from what's in front of you, essentially. You kind of see? Mm -hmm. So this is the lens wide open, just like when we had that flashlight shining through and showing your slides. Mm -hmm. Like there was only one specific spot where you could be in focus, basically. Yeah, I but mean. But then when I put the little tiny dot in it, oh, right. I could be a lot less accurate, and it would pull it into focus still. Okay. So that's kind of what's happening here, essentially. Some thoughts. No, I mean, like, I just don't understand, like, why it works, because I don't understand it technically with my eyeballs either. Ah, yeah, okay. So if you yeah, start to close okay. down the hole. That totally makes sense. You have. The light, the way light works is if you have a smaller hole, it can only go in a certain direction. So it's stronger. Mm, it's not uh, stronger, it's, it's more directional. Okay. And so it's gonna, okay, so here's a fan. All right. So uh, we have a fan here, I'm gonna turn it on for fun. Shit, turn off now. I can't, 
Oh. So shutter speed is basically how long your sensor or your film is exposed to an image. Right. Um, so if somebody's running and your lens is open or your, your sensor is exposed for a really long time, they're yeah, going to be blurry. Yeah. yeah. So just like this fan, it would be really blurry. Uh, I happen to have some examples. So if we were shooting this fan blade at uh, 1 one twenty fifth of a second, this is what it looks like. Okay? So it's kind of blurry. But I can still Yeah, you can sort of see it. Maybe better than with your eye. Um, Definitely. So what happens if we increase the shutter speed to, say, a th or rather decrease it to yeah. a thousandth okay. of a second? Then what do you think is going to happen? Be more controlled. Right, I see You're more right, of an yeah. image. I see more of the fan blade. It's more defined right, now because yeah. it's capturing at a smaller instance. It almost looks like it's not even on. Yeah. So. So here's a four thousandth of a second. It's almost like it's as kind if of an it's eerie, still. eerie picture right there. Yeah, well, it's really dark. <laughs> well, so, that's yeah. So you see how aperture and uh, f-stop are correlated with each other in the sense that um, if you have a four thousandth of a shutter speed, mm -hmm. you're going to need a really big aperture to right. to compensate for that because it's so dark. Or there's another thing you can do. Well, ISO basically is a it's the easier one to change for me on my camera. It's the sensitivity of either your sensor or your film. Um, okay. It's the sensitivity of the photons or electrons. Here you got 160 speed mm -hmm. retrochrome, and then you have 400 speed Tmax. So uh, this one, or which one do you think is going to be more sensitive to light? Oh shoot! Uh, the higher probably, number. Yeah, I was like probably yeah. that one. The higher number. So how does that translate to digital? Well, say you were shooting this Pentax camera and you wanted to see what's actually happening. Here's what ISO 400 looks like. 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, and 1280. Okay, well that one definitely looks like crap. Yeah. Digital has gotten a <laughs> come a long ways. Um, like the, the color a little bit, like you can start to see the weird purpley things happening. Uh huh. That's, that's part of a, a bigger ISO. Okay, so has anything I explained like helped? At all. I think working with you has helped more than this tutorial. Um, I liked the demonstration a lot. Really? Yeah. Um, okay, well, that kind of helps, yeah. It's better to do than to see, I guess. I'm Daniel Lockman, this was Kelly, and thank you so much for watching and staying with us for a little bit. Uh, we're going to try and have some more videos out where we just talk about stuff, and keep an eye out for our new Retro Camera Review episodes because we have a ton of stuff we are planning, and yeah. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up or subscribe if you thought this was worth it. Yeah. Talk to you later. Bye. Yay. Yay.